Hello guys, welcome to the fourth example in chat models where we are going to have a real time conversation with a chat model through our terminal, right? So it's going to be very similar to what we do in ChatGPT application itself, but instead we are going to do it locally on our computer. So as you can see, I've already prepared the code. Let me show you the result of it and then we can jump into the code. So when I hit run, you can see that it says you, right? It is basically prompting me, the user to give it a question, right? So if I were to say, um, let's say, what is the square root of 49? And uh, when I press enter, let's wait for a while. And now you can see the AI's message saying seven, right? And now I can also ask a follow up question, something like, how did I, how did you get that value? Right? And uh, so I can say, how did you get that value? and then press enter and you can see it is walking us through the reasoning, right? It's great because it sort of remembers the previous conversations, basically the history or the context of the conversation. So now if I wanted to, let's say, know the square root of 81, right? So I don't even have to explicitly type out what is the square root of 81. I don't have to do that anymore because it remembers, right? So I can just say, do the same for 81 and press enter. Let's wait for a second. So you see, it is it already knows that we're asking for the square root. So it is already giving us the value, which is nine, right? And now if I want to exit out of a terminal, I can just say EXIT, press enter, and now we're out of it. So basically how ChatGPT works under the hood, let's actually see how we can implement this in the code. So as usual, as we've done in the previous sections, we are initializing our model right here, and then we are loading all the environment variables. Now this is where it starts to get interesting. So very similar to the list that we had two sections ago, we're still going to work with the list here. The list is going to have AI messages, system message, human messages, right? But this time we're not going to have it hard coded. Instead, we are going to be adding things dynamically, right? So to start off, we have an empty list here called chat history. So as we discussed in the previous sections, the first item of the history array or the list should typically always be the system message that sort of gives AI a certain role or a responsibility, right? So we've created a system message right here, and then we've added it to the chat history list. So in this case, it's going to be helpful assistant. I'm, I'm keeping it very simple. So let's move on. So right here, we have a while loop that keeps on looping until a certain condition is met, right? So let's go through it line by line. Let's see what's happening. So to start off, we are basically prompting the user, which is me or the user basically to type in a string. It could be a question, it could be anything, right? So I want to ask AI a question right here, uh, uh, like we did in the demo, what is the square root of 49, right? So the entire string of what is the square root of 49 is going to be in this query variable. So in case we put the string exit exit, then we're just going to break out of this loop, but we are not going to do that. So it's going to come to this particular line. So this line adds the human input message to the list as the human message. Very simple, right? Now, as soon as the uh, list has a human question at the very end, we're going to send the entire list with all of its history to the LLM. Now, whatever response that we get back from the LLM is going to be the AI message, right? So the response, which is now the AI message is then put into the list right here. And the while loop just keeps on looping. So that is how simple it is to communicate with an LLM through our terminal, right? So all the code, again, if you get stuck anywhere, all the code is available in the repository. So do pull it and uh, do run it by yourself. All right. So in this section, basically we've seen how to store all the conversation history in a local variable that is kept in memory. And that is the chat history variable, right? But in real production applications, normally you would save all of the conversations in the cloud so that even if you exit out of the terminal in this case, or even if the user were to close the application, the data is still going to remain in the cloud. So let's actually see how to do that in the next section.